What's up guys, Rick Denham here, Holy Moly Outdoors. Welcome back to another Tech Tip Tuesday. And thanks so much for joining us today. It's December 12th. Hard to believe we're two weeks really away from Christmas. I still can't believe it. But guys, this is a great video today because we're gonna cover a high water technique because if you can't hear it, it's dumping rain outside. There's gonna be a lot of runoff this weekend and this technique could help you get on some early winter steelhead. So stay tuned. So like I said guys, we are talking a high water technique. Well really what we're gonna be talking about is plunking for steelhead. Guys, this is a old, old, old favorite technique for so many people and honestly has got kind of lost in the shuffle. There's been so much popularity now of bobber fishing, float fishing, whatever you want to call it, spoons, beads, worms, all these other techniques. But guys, in all honesty, late fall and winter can bring a lot of rain here in the Pacific Northwest. And a lot of the time, our rivers are really high or they're punched out. Well, when those times happen and you still want to get that itch to fish, there are a lot of ways you can still intercept these fish. And honestly, it's pretty darn easy. So we're going to break down here, plunking for steelhead, specifically winter steelhead is our target, um, given the time of the year. But let me tell you guys, this is a fun technique, super easy to do, and... You don't need a lot for it. So we'll get started just covering the gear you need, guys. So we're going to break this down from a few important things to have in your arsenal to adding the actual terminal tackle itself. All right, guys, so we're going to talk about the gear you need to plunk for steelhead. It's so basic. Really, it can be done with a lot of the stuff you already have, which makes it such a fun technique to do. So I'm gonna cover a couple things outside of the terminal tackle here, and then we'll dump, jump into the rods itself and then break down the gear. So one of the things that I, I think is just so critical is having a good rod holder. A rod holder is gonna make all the difference for when you get set up on the bank. This one happens to be five bucks from Cabela's. It's like a sand spike version. So a lot of our Pacific Northwest areas either have some dirt line banks, maybe some rocks in some places, or sand. If you're lucky to find some of the softer stuff, you can definitely drive one of these rod holders way into the sand. Fits the rod perfectly in there, makes for a really great way to do it. That is really key to have on you because in all honesty, if you don't have a rod holder, you're not going to really be able to detect a lot of bites. It really gives you a stationary bait station where your lure can sit in the travel lane without you having to touch it or do anything. It makes it really easy to see bites, which is a huge part of the game. The second thing I really think that's important for plunking is some way to store your leaders. Personally, I created and did some of these pool noodle deals. You guys can see a video above by no means is this something that I made? Um, I had the idea from something that I saw somebody else do and just kind of added my own twist to it. So nothing really fancy, but these plunking setups keep all your leader rigs straight. Now what's also cool is you could use something like one of these leader feeders um, with these uh, foam boards on them. This would really be great for your plunking rigs. So either one of these works. Obviously this takes up a lot more space with the pool noodle. So you could get all your plunking rigs set up on one of these, and I would highly recommend doing that. Fits easily in your pack. This you can carry down with you, totally up to you. So dependent on the space you have, those are a couple things. The third key piece you need to have with you is some sort of a bell. Now these can range from a little rod clip-on double bell, still makes a good amount of noise. You could have a rod clip on small bell here or you can have one of the bigger ones here that makes more of a like a cowbell obviously they all have their place 
but having some sort of noise indicator for when that rod's bouncing with a bite. Um, so what we're looking at for plunking, guys, is you're looking at a lot of different travel lanes, right? So close to the bank, which that means is you're going to be having potentially heavier flows with this high water. So we're going to be using heavier lead or weight to get us to the bottom. So we need a pretty stout rod. And so in this portion next, we're going to talk about rods. Now, again, there are specific made plunking rods out there by manufacturers. I like to use the stuff that's versatile from my arsenal. In the salmon and steelhead world, on a normal sized river, not the Columbia or some of these other things, um, you can get away with a heavier salmon steelhead rod. So, guys, this is my tried and true Lama glass. This happens to be a 10 to 20, which can hold up to basically almost two ounces of lead casting. Um, this thing is an 8.6 model and has pretty much done everything for me. This is an old school Lama glass. I have it paired up with a 300 size Alexa, 20 pound test mainline, something that's got some beat behind it. Now, I'm probably only going to be using up to about 8 ounces of lead. And again, you're only casting maybe 15, 20 feet off the bank. So you can get away with a shorter rod, like this guy here being 8.6. However, if you want to bump something up, there are other things out there. Okuma makes some great rods in those SST models. Um, Velocity actually has some trolling rods that hold up to a, quite a bit of weight on their lead. So this one happens to be one of the Salmon Extreme series, but this is the 9.6-12-25. This one, the blue and black, is a killer rod. I use it for some of my bigger king and dropper fishing, um, but this works great for plunking as well. A very nice soft tip section with a really solid backbone. Really makes the difference in plunking. You can see those light tap bites, but you have enough to really either cast the heavier lead or really reef on those bigger steelhead as you fight them. So you now have your rods picked out. Everything I run is 15 pound test at a minimum but then I'm generally doing 20 pound on the main line. So reels wise, bait casters are really the key and way to go. The low profile reels like the Lexa 300 is a great one. You can bump it up to some of the more round Abu Garcia's. Velocity even makes their own uh, recons that are really good for that. Um, Akuma has their mm -hmm. low profiles. There's a definitely a lot of stuff out there. As far as reels goes, that'll make it work. Now. If you want to then go look at uh, the next step, we're digging into terminal end now. So we're going to look at how you set up a plunking rig because the typical way that you're going to see this out on the water and fish is with a Yakima bait spinning glow. This is our spinning glow here. In the current, just like you see there, this thing will spin slowly. You have your bait and everything there on the hook end you are ready to fish. What I do here is I tie my leaders about 20 inches long, maybe 24 inches total tops. Um, based on the current, based upon where I'm at, visibility plays so much a key in this, guys. You're having your baits right near the bottom, and really, you're hoping that you put that bait right in front of the fish's mouth as they're traveling upstream, and they boom, hit it. That's why you're fishing those travel lanes. So what we're gonna do, I have a 2 aught hook here, a couple little spacer beads to act as a bearing, and then I got a number 4 spinning glow. And guys, honestly, the spinning glows can range in so many colors. Like I, This is just some little collection I have. But for steelhead in the winter particularly, your pinks, your oranges, the flash wings, the white wings, they all work really well. You just have to feel and find the confidence in the color you like. But typically, orange, whites, and pinks are great starters for that. Once you have then your bases picked out for your leader rigs, uh, the next step is to get your weight selected. So there are a couple popular ones out there. Most of you may be familiar with the pyramid style. This happens to be a triangle plunking weight. So it's supposed to more or less hit the sand and dig in like that. 
So more or less, you're going to end up having your weight stuck there. So when your main line is going back to your rod, it can anchor up. Sometimes this may end up doing it this way, but that point is supposed to help drive in to the bottom. So those work great in certain areas. They can, however, be pretty snaggy if you're in any areas of rocks. Now, I've also these last couple of years been really focusing in using these steel weights from Dave's Tangle Free. You can use these weights all the way up. I think he has the 24 ounces. I mean, goodness gracious, for those of those big Columbia weights, but these five and six ounces are great for most of what we encounter. But like I said, you can go all the way up to eight ounces for some areas because of the current flow. After I have my weight picked out, I need some kind of way to connect my spinning glow to the main line. And honestly, this is a little spreader and it's perfect for this application. My main line ties right here into this top swivel. My bait side with that spinning glow is tied on with a snap. That snap ties and clips directly to that back like this. And when that bait hits the bottom, because the weight clips on the back there, boom, your lure is fishing anywhere from 18 inches to the bottom. So you're right in that zone of that fish's face. Now you can put a longer leader to get that higher off the bottom, but really it's not necessary because you're trying to keep it close. Those fish are going to hug tight. So what this is really going to look like is you have your weight with your spreader to a snap swivel there connected all the way down to your 20 inches of leader size 4 Yakima bait spinning glow a number 2 hook and then I like to use either shrimp or eggs and sometimes honestly you can catch fish without even using bait at all so in that case I like to tip the hook itself with something like an x-factor tackle worm because a worm like that gives great action because of what the spinning glow provides so this is a little trick I learned from a buddy of mine and what he does is he threads his worm right on the back of the hook and just like that there's your attractor. So while that spins, you can just see you're going to basically have a wobble like that. Gives a little bit extra attraction. You don't have to mess with bait. But if you do like to use bait, a good glob of eggs or some good shrimp will work great. But that's a basic plunking rig, guys, for steelhead. Rigged up, super easy. I would just tie it straight to my main line, find my current seam, fish right on the edge of that and hope that I get some fish on a traveling. Super fun, super effective. Honestly, for winter steelhead, when the water's high, it's a great way to get out. And you really can do some damage on some big fish because you can really find out where those fish are traveling, whether it's on a tide. It doesn't have to be high water. Plunk can be very effective on normal flows. Um, so you guys can just set up yourself and find a great spot. One thing we can't forget to talk about as well is scent. Because these fish are usually going to be in a foot or less of visibility. They need something to hone into, right? We already have a loud, crazy, bright, attractive lure in the plunking setup. But if that fish gets up close, we want them to be able to have an instant reaction. So whether or not I have a glob of bait on there, I have a plastic trailer... I need something that's going to put off a lot of scent. So I'm either going to be using some kind of gel or liquid scent like you have from your, your great, let's say, dipping sauce, for example. You could dip this whole thing in and you have a nice smelling setup. You could use something like the AN Sporting Scent Sticks. There's a lot of great stuff out there, but you want something that adds some scent to your bait location. Now, again, Check your regulations and make sure you are able to use bait and scent in the locations you're fishing. But for plunking, limited visibility, 
that is a huge added bonus when you can add a little bit extra to your bait and make it more effective. Now, we're talking plunking, so I can't not mention this. It's a little trick that I saw from guys down on the Columbia River, and I've seen it used around here as well. And what we're talking about is adding another lure. So you could end up, dependent on your regulations, fish multiple hooks. Now this could be setting myself up with a second spreader up above, and now I'm fishing multiple spinning glows and then you're fishing two different areas of the water column. And what's great about that, the fish could be traveling on the bottom, they could be two feet off the bottom. Now you're covering all that depth. So I would end up shorting up my leader to about 18 inches, and then I'd have about 24 inches between the two, so none of these will end up hooking each other while you cast. That's not the only way. Two hooks is great with two spinning glows, but there's another little trick that will be deadly effective and still covers a couple different areas of the water column. So what I would do next, this one's a little dirty trick. You take a plug like a 3.0 maglip, a U20 flatfish, or maybe even a tad poly, and 18 inches of leader and a snap. Now what I'm gonna do here, guys, so I have everything all set up just like so. I have a rolling barrel swivel, I have then a dual lock, and a half ounce cannonball. And so what I have next on my main line is I have the line going down, and I'll show you this right now. I have my line going down, I have a bead or a corky, just like so. I then end up getting myself a swivel. And I'll quickly add the swivel here. Just like so. So the corky slides down. Boom. Now I would have probably a two foot dropper to where my weight setup is. Now remember, what's then going to happen next, cast your stuff out normally. Nothing changes, you're plunking the same way as you would, you just have that extra swivel section, right? Well, what's cool, you get set up, your rod's loaded up, all those great things. I then take this dual lock, and I go to where my line's taut, and I grab it, I snap down, and lock in the dual lock. Let me do it this way. Snap in, lock in the dual lock. Now it's tied on that line. I then, because the tension of the line is already out into the water, I will slowly drop this, pick the rod out of the rod holder, and use the tension of that line and that plug is going to slowly slide all the way down. What it'll do is it'll keep sliding, sliding until it hits that corky, and it'll be just like that. And what you have now, guys, is a stopper, and you're now officially fishing, effectively, a plug and a spinning glow. Guys, this is such a cool rig, and I will show you guys this on the water here in another video, but super duper killer way to make multiple baits work so whether you can fish two spinning glows or you can fish a plug and a spinning glow you need to check your regulations and see how many hook points you're allowed on one line because you can't necessarily have a plug with two hooks two trebles and then two spinning glows because you're now fishing four hooks whereas if you had just the spinning glow the plug with the trebles, you now have three. So you have to play in to see what your regs are, but it's a very effective, advanced way to plunk. But if you're looking for just a basic, all you need is that spinning glow, guys, and you will catch a lot of fish when the conditions are super tough because there's nobody else out there usually, and you're gonna be having fun because this is the time when the water is up, finally we get another shot of rain, 
these fish that are waiting out in the salt water are just ready to go. So hope this helps guys. Plunking for winter steelhead, one of my favorite ways to pass the time when really there's nothing else to do. It's a great way to throw a fire on the bank, really have some fun, get some buddies together. You never know what's going to happen. So take care guys. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this one, give us a thumbs up and subscribe below. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much, and we'll catch you out in the water next time. Take care, guys. Fish on!